seriously reckon the biggest one ever is on the day coordinator. Agreed. Because <laughs> I think, you know, it's such a huge piece of the puzzle. And, you know, that is the person that is literally on the day bringing your wedding to life. Yeah, 12 months of planning comes down to that one person executing a good run sheet. Absolutely. And I think, you know, important thing to note, which, you know, potentially a lot of couples who are doing this for the first time don't understand is when you book a venue that potentially has food and beverage included, and you know, that package may include an event manager, that, that isn't a client facing event manager, that's a back of house event manager. So they're running the, the catering kitchen and making sure all of the food and everything goes out on time and the bar is running smoothly. But you know, who's the person that's going to make sure all of your linen is ironed and you know, like getting your wrangling family for photos and you know, sending you on your way for your bridal portraits, calling the transport if they need to, um, holding off, you know, catering for 10 minutes so your bridal entrance is, you know, as baller as you need it to be. I think we have some amazing examples of- Yeah, even down to telling you when it's time to start walking to go down the aisle. Literally. Like that's what an on the day coordinator does. And so yeah. it's, it is really important to, when we talk about things like checking with your venue, what do you get? One of those things is, do I get uh, an, a wedding coordinator? Um, an on the day coordinator and, and what would their role be? Because if it is anything other than helping you manage the day from start to finish, then doing it yourself from our point of view is probably one of the biggest mistakes that couples make is saying, yeah. I don't need that person. I think I've got it sorted. I'm super good at run sheets. The reality is you don't want to be the person managing that run sheet. That run sheet is your Bible for the day down to the minute of this is what everybody should be doing. This is when they should be doing it. And you should not be the person that everybody's coming to saying, hey, this is now five minutes behind. What would you like to do? Mm. That's a terrible wedding day experience. And even I think as well, like we've had brides before or clients before that have worked in events and have been the people that, at other people's events that have been the one that brought the day together. So, you know, on their wedding day, it was very easy for them to translate those skills, but the fact that they booked with Nudo and actually got assigned an on-the-day on coordinator and were able to turn the event brain off and just enjoy the party. So I think even if you're like, oh, I'm an organized person, like you said, I've totally got this, like, you know, run sheets down to the minute. It's like on the day, you just want to be able to switch off and throw the run sheet out the window and just, not out the window, to the coordinator <laughs> and just, you know, enjoy the day. You, you don't, I think what, what people don't realize is when you go to a really, uh, an, a well-oiled machine of an event where everything runs seamlessly. The reality is it probably wasn't. Mm. Um, as a guest, um, as a bride, as a groom, as somebody who's there on the day, you're so uh, wrapped up in everything that's happening that everything seems like it's flowing perfectly. In the meanwhile, you've got your on the day coordinator talking to catering about things that are gonna be pushed back 20 minutes because something just happened or somebody just fell over. Uh, right before the ceremony, a guest fell over and now you need to attend to them. Like these are things that happen actually really common, hopefully not the falling over bit, <laughs> but, but these are things that without that on the day coordinator, the only way they're like, somebody's looking around saying, who do I ask? Yeah. And so, you want to make sure of all of the things, whether you choose to have a wedding planner who guides you through that whole thing or you got this, making sure that somebody's there on the day who's literally following line by line saying, I now need to make sure that this supplier is over here. Photographers now needs to be ready to do group photographs. So where's the photographer and do they have that person that's going to be wrangling all of the, the people for group photos? Yeah. Cool. I now have those people. That's, there's so much in it. Um, mm -hmm. it. You don't switch off for the, for the 10, 12 hours as, as a coordinator. It's something that nobody should go without. Really. No, absolutely. And I think like a good example of this is recently we um, sent a couple out for bridal portraits. Uh, unfortunately, their family photos had pushed things out a little bit. So they were out, you know, 20 minutes behind schedule. Um, you know, the photos, they wanted to go a little bit longer. So they were stuck in a little bit of traffic to go a little bit further for those photos. Photos were worth it, by the way. Um, you know, anyway, so obviously all of this pushed everything back by about 30, 40 minutes. Yeah. So meanwhile, obviously back at the venue, the on the day coordinator is dealing with, um, you know, guests and the caterer and all of these different things and ultimately made the call, okay, cool. Um, I'm actually gonna feed all of the guests. Let's get all of the food out. And when the bride and groom came back, they were like, thank you so much for making that call. We would have been really stressed having kept our guests waiting and hungry. So, you know, do you really wanna be at bridal portraits having calls from your caterers saying, hey, everyone's here waiting for you. Do you want your food to go out? You know, it's just like to be able to give hand over that, you know, power to someone else and just say, I'm here to enjoy the day. Like you run this, you got this and just take all of that stress off of you. Yep. Have an on the day coordinator is mm -hmm. like biggest, biggest one. Please do do it.
All right, another one which for me hits very close to home and I'll tell you about that why in just a second. Um, styling, so specifically when I say that, styling linen and napkins and apiary, all of those components and then I wanna jump into styling as a general because there's even things, I'm not a stylist, photographer background, definitely done a lot of event planning but hadn't done a lot of the styling components before until I got into Nudo and got my hands dirty and I didn't realize quite how much just how long things take, Gen seriously how long things take. And so the first one I wanted to touch on was, um, hey, you wanna do beautiful tablecloths, uh, you wanna do, and you wanna do custom blush napkins, whatever the color is, you, want, you don't want just what the caterer is gonna bring, you wanna do something that's gonna elevate your whole look and keep it in with a particular color palette, which we're all about. The downside is... <laughs> Who is doing that? <laughs> Who is doing this stuff? Yeah, I think like if you're lucky enough to have a stylist or a wedding planner there along your journey, um, they, they're obviously responsible for that on the day. So they're getting all of that for you. They're going to wherever it is they need to go to pick that up or yeah. they're accepting it to be delivered to their office. They're yeah. prepping it all for you. And then on the day they're heading to the venue. And I think, you know, like Will mentioned, uh, one of the biggest things is the prep behind it because you don't realize, but if you're, you know, draping tables worth of, you know, 180 people, every single tablecloth needs to be ironed ironed people <laughs> this is what i started having to do <laughs> did not know i'm like if i'm getting this stuff cleaned and sent to me like this should be brand new it should be ready to go on a table no it comes literally folded wrapped in little rectangles in plastic bags and when you open it up there's creases through the entire Crease thing through, yeah. every single piece needs to be ironed yeah every piece <laughs> needs to be ironed it takes like three hours four hours for one person three to four hours depending you know if you've got 150 guests it's a lot of tables mm. uh, that's been my job recently, yeah. uh, of course. So fun. Seriously, uh, somebody has to do this, right? So somebody's, and also the other bit to consider is who should take delivery of these items because what if there's something missing? You don't just take delivery and say, thanks, everything's good because you might actually, and it happens to us a little bit, right? Yeah. It's like a table, um, a whole table linen is missing. Yeah. Happens quite regularly. They say you need 24 and you get 23. Actually a big problem on the day when you start mm. to iron. Yep. Who's responsible for making sure that everything's there and who's gonna get go and get the other one of whatever it is if there's any missing. Absolutely, and I think this comes back to, you know, who, who's gonna get involved in your day. Yep. You know, if you happen to have like a cousin, an auntie or a friend who is helpful enough to, you know, raise their hand and offer to do these things, First of all, bless their cotton socks because yeah. they probably don't know what they're, what they're getting themselves Sox into. <laughs> but you know, I think it's all about that prep, you know, and that that's what we're here for at Nudo to be able to give you all of this information so you can make those decisions. So you know, whether it is um, you know a cousin or a friend helping out on the day, making sure they understand that they are going to the venue and they are actually ironing tablecloths, and and so that way when you come in, you're wowed with the you know with the venue instead of being like, oh my god, there's giant creases down all of my tablecloths. <laughs> a fortune on them yeah you know I spent yeah, that's the other thing you've gone to the effort of hiring them and yeah. you want them to look amazing yeah. it then leads neatly into actually how do you take delivery or how how does a venue take delivery for for anything that's going to be dropped off so have you chosen a custom arbor welcome sign seating chart sign any of the you've got beautiful clear plinths yep. you have uh, napery linen all of these things maybe you have byo alcohol mm, alcohol yeah, um, let's chat about a little bit of some of the complications that come. So, a uh, little bit of context, obviously at the Warmill, we actually work at the Warmill, that's Nudo's headquarters. So, our couples get really lucky because a lot of the time when a delivery just gets dropped off, we're like, hang on, who's that for? Oh yeah, it's all good, we're already here. But a lot of the time, most venues aren't open during the days. They don't, they're not an office for people. No. They're closed and people go there to open up to accept deliveries. So making sure that you understand how possible it is to get deliveries dropped off and who's collecting them and who's gonna pick them back up on the other side. So when you leave at the end of your night, probably had a few champagnes, everything's kind of messy, you jump into your executive car and you, you're whisked off. All of those things that you've spent money on now need to be collected, repackaged so that they go back to where they should go without stuff getting missed, getting missed going missing, disappearing. Yeah. 
that also happens quite a bit too. Absolutely. And even things like alcohol, you know, like when you're dropping off potentially alcohol for, you know, 200 people, um, you know, that is a lot of alcohol. So, you know, you need, you need to make sure that you've got someone from your end that's there helping the venue actually accept that delivery because, you know, like we mentioned, like the venue isn't going to take responsibility for anything missing inside of that. So you really want to make sure someone that you trust is there, whether it be a planner, a, um, you know, a, or a helpful family member or friend um, to like actually accept that on your behalf and make sure all of it um, goes like stored away um, properly. Just so you, you know as well, just for own, your own peace of mind that sending something somewhere, sending it to a venue and hoping that they're going to take stock of it, yes they, they care a lot about what they do but they also do weddings every weekend so it's very easy for them to just miss as one delivery comes in, was it for today's wedding, was it for next weekend's wedding versus somebody who, if they're a coordinator and you have one amazing but if you have a friend or somebody who's involved in this, just making sure that you have somebody who's being responsible and saying yep I got that, I got that, I got that and then yes I packed that, I packed that, yeah. I packed that. Or even if it comes down to, you know, potentially you don't have an actual stylist that you booked separately as a vendor, but potentially you've gone to a styling company and you've hired napkins, um, yeah, cutlery, yeah. candles through them. A lot of styling companies actually do do the setup for you as well. So it's just about going out and finding out what's available and what's at your fingertips and what you're prepared to pay as well. You know, obviously like having a, a separate stylist as their own vendor and then having styling props and then all of these other things, you know, that obviously all does add up. So it's just about making sure you're going out there and just sussing, sussing what the best options are for you. And last little tip, candles. Oh, well, let's talk about candles. So mm. Didn't know about this one either. Yeah. When candles arrive, if you've not actually unpacked these, Holy moly, it takes a long time. Yeah, I was actually just saying to Will, so again, floristry background, one of the things that I got stuck with very early in my career was um, saying, yeah, no problems to the bride. And they're like, by the way, do you mind just popping the candles on the table? I'm like, absolutely. Because you no, would, wouldn't you? You know, yeah. you, of course, you're not going to charge them extra to put candles out. Like, you know, how, how awful would that, that be? But then you actually get there, realize it's six boxes of, like I'm talking boxes yeah. of mini boxes. <laughs> of candles everything is taped everything's in plastic everything has the wick pulled down then you have to unpack the vases so all of that's also in cardboard and plastic and bubble wrap all of that needs to get unpacked and then they have to go on the table every wick needs to be pulled up everything needs to be lit when i as a florist say yes no problem i'll help you out as a single person <laughs> turning up on the day to just put some flowers on the table, you know, you don't realize what you're getting yourself into. So again, just like the linen as well, if you've got helpful vendors, um, you know, if you've got helpful friends and family, um, really just understanding the the actual work that goes into that, you know, and it's- And just, time, and, right? And time, so just yeah. allocating enough time, saying I'm gonna send my auntie who knows this stuff and she's gonna be super helpful and I'm gonna send her on her own and she's got two hours, it ain't gonna do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. So just being really conscious of, um, you know, exactly timing, um, how long everything's going to take, what there is, just just walk through it step by step and um, make sure you have as many hands on deck as you can. Yeah, for sure. Budgets. It literally blows my mind that I speak to people and they have not made a wedding budget for themselves. It's just like not wanting to know, right, isn't it? I feel like I should be like, budgets, and then you just crop straight into my <laughs> face so that I look super, super serious. This is a serious one, and loads of people don't do it. Yeah, it, 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 you're right, though. It is, it is like, I think, a little bit of a denial sticking your head in the sand situation. You're like, if I don't know how much I'm spending, it's not actually coming out of my bank account. And, and who likes being in Excel on my weekends? I was supposed <laughs> to be planning my wedding. This this isn't fun. Or truly being afraid of Excel, just not, not, not yeah, embracing yeah. technology and, you know, like, embracing technology. It's perfect, yeah. <laughs> no, it, seriously, the using something like Excel if you've never used it before and then all of a sudden you have to jump in and you're using that to manage all of your spend, that's probably an overwhelming thing in itself and then you're looking at all these numbers and they probably do get quite big. That's overwhelming in itself, but it's also exceptionally powerful and so flippant important mm -hmm. to know how much you're spending for the reason that you also need to be able to track, are you spending it on the right stuff? Uh, we talked a lot about in, in that wedding planning journey saying what are for you and your significant other what what are the most important things that you want is it food and beverage is it dancing and music is it the drinks and you want cocktails all night all of these things 
you should be prioritizing them and figuring out what are the most important things because you're just not gonna be able to afford to do everything. Mm -hmm. And when you don't have a clear budget and you're not tracking things well, before you know it, you might be at your budget or over and you've not allocated money for really important stuff. Yeah, and I think in the age of like social media, Pinterest, Instagram, it's very easy to have these grand plans, especially when it comes to styling, decor, and you know, like you mentioned, if it is potentially the, the drinks and the food that's the most important thing to you, but then you look at this Pinterest photo and you're like, but I also want that. It is about prioritizing, you know, where that spend is going to go because because before you know it, you know, it's just like you have this idea in your head of what you think you're going to spend and it just blows out like that. Perfect example. Um, I was sitting down, we were talking, I was talking with a couple and budget was a, a hot topic because they had a very specific amount of money that they didn't want to spend more than. They had a, a house deposit that they were saving for and they had other grand plans for things that they wanted to use their cash for. Totally fine. It's really good to know how much money you want to spend. Uh, and so one of the things that they had said that they were very close to booking already, which they're super excited about, was a DJ sax. Mm -hmm. And it was about two and a half grand. Yeah. Um, super keen on doing this, but I, we actually hadn't been through the whole process of what else do we want to cover? Mm -hmm. How many guests? What are you feeding them? And by the time we actually went through those other things and I started drafting a budget for them, they were already at their budget and they had almost committed to a thing that as soon as we went through that, they both looked at each other and were like, we do not need that that DJ sax. Like seriously, it's crazy that we're now at our budget. We now can't afford videography, which is another thing that we really wanted to do. Yep. It's outside of the budget. Yep. So this is like, this is the reality of actually working through all of those things first and figuring out, I thought that that was a priority and now I realize I actually can't afford things like I wanted cocktails. Yeah. And it just, it just makes things more realistic and achievable as well when you do break it down like that too. Cause you know, it, it actually works the other way as well. I think too, you know, you could work it out where you're like, okay, cool. Here are all of the things that I want. Actually, you know what? The DJ sax is so important to me that I'm actually going to scale back food so I can afford it. So, you know, it definitely works in the other end of the spectrum. Maybe you have put everything together and you're like, oh my God, I actually have a little bit of cash left. You know what? I'm going to you know, spend up and get that hanging floral install that I want to get. Grab that one thing on Pinterest that I was loving and didn't think that I could afford. Exactly. And it just gives you complete control over the experience. I think, you know, this common age, like people really feel like they're losing control of the wedding planning and that it, it, it is spiraling or, you know, they feel like they're spending too much money and you just need to take that power back and just make sure you are all over everything that's, you know, coming in and going out and just taking full control back of the ex planning experience, the budget experience, and just making sure you're spending what you're comfortable with. Absolutely, budget's super, super important. They will, they give you the power back to be able to make decisions. When you don't actually know how much room you've got to work with, you don't know how to make the right choice and decide whether something should stay or go. Absolutely, and at Nudo, what we do is we have a budget that is Nudo focused, so everything included in the Nudo package. And when we show our clients the budget, obviously, like lucky them because we've already pre-made them a template. Um, but you know, we do give them a tab for anything outside of Nudo. So whenever I say to my clients, "Oh, by the way, this is um, your Nudo budget," but here's this tab, and you can put everything from teeth whitening to dog collars and dog, you know, outfits. <laughs> dog outfits so Very weird that that's been in there more than once <laughs> so many times <laughs> <laughs> you know and i'm like oh and then see this little cost right here this is your total wedding cost literally everything down to the dollar and they're literally like what so it's just so powerful to be able to just see that and just have control over it and really understand what you're spending line by line by line